Hello everybody, my name is Vanessa. If you don't know who I am, a chance call for those that struggle. Um, I'd like to welcome the new subscribers. I pray that God blesses you and gives you understanding and this channel helps deepen your relationship with Christ. Um, in my last couple of videos, I was talking about um, key access. Uh, God is taking me to the front of the line. And then I also spoke of a castle vision that God gave me entering into the courts of God. So, um, this is what I want to talk about, um, entering into a new dimension. I spoke of this in my previous video, um, just briefly about when you enter into a new dimension, your heart and mind is in, it's a new dimension. It's a deeper level. It's, you might, you might not be able to see it on the physical side, but it's a spiritual side. The new dimension is in the spiritual realm. Okay. So, um, God says in Revelations that he is going to uh, reveal mysteries to us and that our ears, let me see, I wrote this down, that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have um, has it entered into the hearts of man, okay? We cannot fathom it, we cannot anticipate it because we do not know it, okay? He's going to reveal mysteries to us and the kingdom of God is mysteries, when he wants to, when he wants us to, when he wants to reveal a mystery, he, he um, takes us into a new dimension um, and he gives us the opportunity to walk into that. When you are aligning your body, soul, and spirit um, to God's word, to God's will, and you're exercising that and God has worked on your heart to where you don't have uncleanness in there and you have forgiven and he has poured love into you, then the Holy Spirit is the one that actually grants us access to enter into the inner courts. So we all have access to the inner courts of God. It's already there. Um, and so I do want to read just briefly to give you guys some understanding um, the veil that hung in the temple clearly spoke of the, um, of the um, consequences of sin and how it separated us from God. Up until the time of Jesus, entry into the most holy place was, re was reserved for the high priest, and that only was once a year. Now suddenly, what was done from all eternity manifested into a miraculous event. As Jesus' body was torn in death, the veil was torn from top to bottom. God himself tore the veil in such a way that it can never be put back in place. Never again can anything, guilt, condemnation, unworthiness, addiction, sickness, poverty, separate us from his presence, from his love, from being able to boldly enter the, front, the throne room of grace. Notice, it is a throne room of grace. Everything that would keep us from it. An intimate and fulfilling relationship with the Lord was dealt with at the cross. We have access to him all the time, no matter what. Hebrew 9 tells us that Jesus entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. Now we enter the same way through his precious blood, for it made a way for us. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus, it, watch, it washes, it cleanses, it justifies, it sanctifies, it purifies, it heals, it delivers, and it redeems us. Out of the hand of the enemy, it made a way when there seemed to be no way. Okay, so when Jesus died on the cross for us, it tore the veil. It tore that veil so nothing can separate us from God. Okay. So I explained that my understanding after God gave me this vision that I'm in, in, in the inner courts, he's telling me I'm in the inner courts. I'm like, what does this mean? I can only understand what, what the Holy Spirit gives me to understand. I don't, under, I don't understand everything in the Bible, okay? And I tell you guys this, like, take what I say to God. You know, look at it, compare it to your life, your situation, and take it to God. There's times that I am wrong, and I'm trying to understand and learn and this is why I share my experiences and my walk with you guys um so I had said that you know okay well when you enter into the courts that's just you know more of an intimate relationship with Christ but it's more than that and it's just amazing 
So God will reveal mysteries to you and he'll, you know, reveal your destiny and your family's destiny and stuff like that. But this is where when you enter into the courts, he is giving you, the Holy Spirit is giving you access to go in front of the judge, the almighty judge of this universe, God, our father, you go to him as a judge, you go to him in humility, in honor, in praise, in worship, and you repent of your sins and your family's sins and the generations of sins that were before you, okay? Because the devil is there with a case. And all these prayers that you're praying that aren't being answered, it's because the devil has a case against you. And when you go to God face to face and you're coming in humility and in honor and in repentance of all of this, and you say, you know, God, I come to you with the blood of Jesus. And I come to you as Jesus, as my advocate and to witness for me and you know your word says your promises say that we have an inheritance through Abraham and you ask the judge to drop all the cases against you and you repent of your sins and your family's sins and you ask for generation generational curses to be dropped in the name of Jesus So I, um, through this understanding, I was listening to, uh, I listened to a few videos by Robert Henderson. I've never heard him before. I've never looked into this. I've never studied it. And I also listened to one of his audiobooks. I will be linking it to in the comments description. And, um, he was explaining that he had ministry for years and he never knew anything about the inner courts. Okay. And it wasn't until his son was going through a divorce and his son got in, fell into a deep depression that he felt like he needed, there was something more he needed to do. So he started going into inter intercessory and um, the Holy Spirit told him go into the inner courts and he didn't know what the inner courts was. So he looked into the inner courts and he went into the inner courts just as I said, in humility, in honor, in praise, in repentance for his son, for himself, for the things that he said against his son, not even realizing that was sin, and, you know, asked for God to redeem his son, okay? He said that a week and a half later, he got a phone call from his son that he is out of the depression and that he's on fire for God. And what used to take him years for a prayer to be answered now took a week and a half. Okay. When you go to God directly, taking the steps of being in the law, humility, honor, praise, repentance, and asking for these cases to be dropped against you under the blood of Jesus. And under God's promises to us through Abraham for your inheritance to be released, then you're not guilty. God's not going to, his verdict is not going to be guilty. He's going to, he's going to give you vindication. Okay. And through this process, so I will be dwelling in this. Okay. So because there's a lot to it as far as you asking God to open up the books of your destiny, open up your books of destiny to your family, open up the um, lawsuit that the devil has against you to show you what is it that he has against you. Okay. So, you know what, in, in Robert Henderson, he didn't, he didn't say that those books were opened when he said that prayer. He didn't say that they were open, but I believe that, you know, it doesn't matter. Like God will, he will vindicate you. If you're, if you're in, if your heart is for God and your heart is for the, for the will of God and you're allowing him to go before or walk through you and the Holy Spirit has granted you access and they're telling you to step before God and grant your, um, prayer. And that's what it is. It's prayer. And 
I, I believe he said, you know, a lot of people get it wrong. They think that you're supposed to pray when you are in a battle. And there's nothing wrong with praying. That's what that's what gives us strength. That's what gets us get that's what gets gets us through it. And we can see God answer our prayers and stuff. But when we enter into the courts of God and we're face to face, that is when our prayers are answered. That is when generational curses are broke. That's when the gates of heaven open up and pour out what is ours, what God has for us. Okay. So I am learning this. I want you guys to look into it, you know, and I actually reached out to uh, my sister in Christ and I asked her, I'm like, you know, I told her like God gave me this vision. I knew nothing about it. And it was awesome because my vision was exactly what I looked up as far as the whole court system and the curtain wall and everything. And she's like, and I'm asked her, I'm like, do you know anything about this? And she said, yes. And so, and she even sent me a picture of all the prayers, um, of the brazen altar. And you can look all this up and there's certain prayers that you pray to, um, have God vindicate you and for these prayers to be answered. And, um, this is just truly amazing that this is a new dimension, okay? You are actually, you are working in the, you can see in the spiritual realm. Your heart is in the spiritual realm. And you're living in your physical realm. And so this is what I also want to speak of is, I believe it was, I don't know if this was Thursday or Friday, but um, after I had this um, vision of me being in the inner courts, I'm not fully understanding it. Um, and so I've spent the past couple days dwelling in this. And, um, but anyway, I had to go to the store and I was getting some, um, foundation, make it foundation. And when I walked over there, I seen this guy, uh, a former coworker from my last job. And, you know, I had told you guys that I just, even though I loved it and stuff, there was, you know, people there that weren't very, I seemed like I was just being attacked for my faith and for Christ. And this person actually said, you know, they, they were atheists and they seemed pretty upset with me about my faith in Christ. And they gave me a lot of heck for it. And they're there and they're down, crouched down. And I'm like, Oh, Hey, I was like, you work here. And they're like, and they glance their head down and and it looks like they're holding a pack of pads, like they're crouched down on the, down to the bottom of the shelf. And they look like they're holding a pack of pads. And this person didn't want to look at me. This person like clearly had animosity on me. I mean, did not like me. And Christ says, it's not you. It's, it's, they don't like you. They don't love you because of who's in you. Christ is in you. Okay. And. This guy was like, yeah, I'm like, oh, you quit, you know, and he's like, yeah, but when I was dealing with this, when I was looking at him, I was seen in the spirit, okay, and I was seeing, I was looking at him, seen in the spirit, and I had all these words coming at me as far as what was affecting him, uh, pride, you know, and just like, like a demonic spirit, um, there was just so much there that was coming at me. I could, it was like looking at him through Jesus's eyes. I mean, I know Jesus looks at us through, you know, his eyes should be like, it's like love and stuff. So, so when I first, you know, realized this, like what this was happening to me, I was like, all this was coming at me. I could feel what he was feeling and I could have these words coming at me as far as what was representing him. And it was like I was looking at him through Jesus' eyes. But then I see that when you enter into this new dimension, you are actually working in this new dimension. And God can, he will reveal people to you and reveal what's holding them back and stuff. I, there wasn't, at that time, there wasn't anything for me to step forward and say, let me pray for you or anything like that. It was just showing me like, this is what's affecting this person. Okay. And, uh, and the way that he was acting towards me, I needed to you know, keep my distance. Um, but, uh, I also want to share, let me see. One more thing. I'm not going to read it all, but I will keep it in the, uh, I will link it to the comments description. Okay. 
a new dimension. Are you ready to enter a new dimension to reach the season that God wants? We need to go through our doors. The door that God has, the, 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 sorry, the door that God was opening was singular. Every person in this church has their own spiritual door and you are only going to be able to fill the times and seasons that God wants you to have if you go through your door and move into a higher dimension than you are now. Whatever dimension of spirituality you were in is not good enough for this season. We have to come up higher. We have to enter a new dimension. Be willing to leave the old dimension. Many people can't live for the future because they're bogged down with the presence with the present and don't have hope for the future. God is telling us that this is something spiritual. You have to move in your spiritual or in your spirit to another realm, a different heavenly place than you are in now. You have to come up higher. There are different heavenly places. There are different realms, different dimensions in the spirit, specifically in the realm of the anointing. The word dimension, if you look it up in the Webster Dictionary, a dimension is a measurement of something in physical space. It has, it has to do with giving measurement. Webster also defines dimension not just for physical objects, but can also des uh, describe something that is less tangible, such as magnitude or the extent of something that is less tangible, such as magnitude or the extent of something. In the spiritual sense, the Bible is very clear to say that there are three heavens. Some believe there are as many as seven, but we know that at least there are three. The first heaven is a natural, immediate atmosphere above us. It's about 20 miles high and you can see it with your natural eyes. This is not spiritual because you can see it. It, if it's spiritual and it's in heaven, it's invisible. The second heaven is where the sun, moon, and stars exist. But in the outer space, there is an ungodly dark and an invisible heaven where Satan and his throne of fallen angels dwell. The third heaven is invisible heaven. This is God's dwelling place, his throne, and his sexual celestial city. The Bible even says that we are citizens of heaven. It says in Philippians 3, 20, for our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly await for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul says he went to the third heaven and saw things he was not allowed to speak about. He went to a realm in the spirit where he saw in a he, where he saw a different dimension in the future of things to come. Psalms 149 talks about giving God high praise, suggesting that there are lower realms of praise. On the other hand, high praise is something that, that's always offered up on high. High praise is not worship. It does not require worship. For something to be classified by God's perspective as worship, it has to enter a dimension that is in the spirit for it to be worshiped. How do you know if you're in a new dimension in God? You are in a new dimension when you can see and do the unusual, the uncommon, the unexpected, and the unpredictable. Have you moved to that place, a heavenly place in Christ where the enemy cannot curse you, where he cannot rob you of your spiritual inheritance, or where he cannot stop the blessings of God coming into your life? There is this dimension that God wants you to go to where you're going to be above the attacks of the enemy. It doesn't mean he's not going to try and attack you. So if it, so if God's blessing, so if God's blessings are not coming on you, it, if you're not receiving your spiritual inheritance or if you feel cursed, have a spirit of heaviness or a spirit of depression on you, if you're carrying around hurts in you and you still have the mistreatment of others affecting you that was done in you in the past or that have been done to you lately, you have not entered into this dimension. All you have to do is go back with what has been said according to the promises that were made. A new dimension is a spiritual place where you have a revelation in your spirit, where you actually are seeing where you are going in God and where your ministry is going in God. You are deliberately of choice and discipline. You're taking your spiritual eyes off of where you've been and what's happening in your circumstances, in your situations, and you're putting your spiritual eyes on 
what God wants you to see now because he wants to take you to a, a new place. He wants to take you someplace. If this is not happening to you, there is a need for you to go through your door. This means you are not yet in your dimension. Walk through your door. A new dimension is where you will receive a completely revived spirit. This means you're alive, full of energy, rejoicing, and celebrating. There is a reviving in this dimension. It changes your outlook and your moods. And you will see things differently. Not only would you want to celebrate God, but you sense that something is happening. There's a new sound that's coming out of your spirit. And you've got to release that new sound in your life in the atmosphere. There is an anointing, a place in Christ, a power that you're reaching toward and coming into. When you deliberately walk through your door, it is a place you haven't been before. This is where God wants to show you his power, splendor, and his glory. It's a dimension where God has called you to do specific works at this time, but you have to consider that all of this is conditional. It's an individual door. It's not corporate. It's your personal door that will take you into the dimension that God has set before you. Don't refuse what God has required of you at this time. Do what God is commanding you this season. As part of God's family, you are a laborer in God's harvest field. God has enlisted you as this, as this specific time by God to bring, to bring people to the church together. To do this, you must allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Don't try to do it on your own wisdom. Don't think of it as a hit or miss. Let the Holy Spirit tell you who he wants. He may shock you by naming somebody. Though it might seem impossible, follow the Holy Spirit. If he tells you a family member, if he tells you a co-worker, if he tells you an enemy, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Talk to the people that he wants you to, not who you want. You have to pers uh, persuade and convince them to come to church gatherings and then watch the Holy Spirit. Um, the Holy Spirit will do uh the, watch the holy spirit what he will in them see how he will draw them by his spirit see how he will minister and bless them don't be a hearer and be don't be a, don't be just a hearer be a doer if you're not entering your door to enter this dimension it's it could be because you're violating or are being rebellious to some of the things he's asking and requiring you you should be endured with power if, you're, if you don't have the power to do this, you need to ask God for it. But if you're not willing and obedient to do it, why should he give you the power? Everything will change if we do, if we do what he wants us to do. Let us remember Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out, of the, thrown out and trampled under, underfoot by men. If you've got the light, you can't be hidden under a basket. You've got to be the light set on a hill. you got to be the salt that influences taste so, it, so that you can taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalms 34, 8. If we want God to come and dwell with us in revival, this is what it will take to make it happen. You are to expect unexpected victories. To obtain this, you have to go into warfare, but you don't have to worry about the battles in this new dimension. You can't be touched. So you're not go just going to win battles, but you're going to experience unexpected victories. You're going to be in an atmosphere, a dimension where you're having such an encounter with God, and he's, in he and he's changing your personality in a way that people will say that you're no longer the same, but someone who has a new pep to their step, a new shine, and a new glow. Get ready for change. Are you ready to change whatever we have to change if it requires sacrifice? Are you ready to make a change for your children, for you? You just can't stay in the same place all your life. The first thing that happens in a revival is repentance. If you're hungry and thirsty for God, you will always find yourself repenting. If revival is truly going to break out, you don't need to stay in the same mold. mold you have to believe God before you witness what he's going to do. So stop refusing and go through your door. God wants you to come into a dimension where you can be debt free, disease free, and destiny free. It is a dimension where God wants to show you 
signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. It is a dimension where God wants you to hear something, where God wants you to release something to you. God is interfering with your habits, routines, schedules, and things that you think may be too inconvenient for you. Let's get revived. Let's move toward what God is saying to us, no matter the cost. Everything God wants us to do is to prepare ourselves for him coming to us in revival so that we are properly prepared ourselves for his coming back to earth. This will be a dimension where there will be some people that have to be taken out of your life because they're not going where you're going. Your door leads to access and movement in God. To get there, you have you have to fast, you have to pray, you have to celebrate, you have to you have to come a true worshiper, go from doing and being. Go from doing to being. This dimension just doesn't happen. It requires asking for revival. It requires you to seek revival. Your heart and spirit have to be ignited by the Holy Spirit, and you are consumed with the fire of God. And it shoots through your bones. It's a dimension where your spirit, soul, and body come into a unity, purpose to serve the Lord with all your spirit, soul, and mind, with all your strength. If you move higher into this dimension, you will not be you will not become a mere doer in worship. You will live a lifestyle of worship. You do not enter this dimension, or how do you enter this dimension? By moving upward, uh, up higher in the spirit through fasting and prayer. Only in this dimension can you in part and impact the new generation how do we do this first we have to humble ourselves the quickest and the best way to humble ourselves is to fast and pray i know for me humbling myself was through the battles that god was giving me i was humbling myself and just trying going to the core and accepting who i am what i've been through what i've done and repented and said you know what i don't want anything hindering me from god and i just did current you know did current videos of the humiliation that God, the humiliation process that God has put me through to humble me. Okay. So this is all I'm going to read on this. I will link it. You can read it yourself. Um, and yeah, I hope this brings more understanding. It is amazing. I suggest that you get into it and look into it and learn all that you can. Just so I am just like I am. I love you all and God bless you. I'll talk to you later.